Okay. Um, well, um, this is a, one of the most important times for the journal differential geometry, which was started 50 years ago by Professor Xi Xi Xiong. And I really admire his uh, insight about the development of geometry at that time. Uh, this was the first journal uh, start on a special subject. Before that, all journals are on general subjects, like Annals of Mathematics, Math and Narnan, and all that. But this was a really the first, sub first journal devoted to differential geometry <clears throat> as a major discipline. Well, besides the inside, geometry was blooming starting at that time, really doing well with all kind of activity going on. And it was really important that Professor Xiong was able to get the very best group of uh, geometers to come together to start this journal. So I think he got a lot of strong support from my teacher, S.S. Chen. And that, I think, is a very important partnership. Although Chen does not want to go into detail of handling things, but he's clearly uh, very important to recruit all these people. So actually, until today, I was taking a uh, little bit surprised to read the major editors of the first issue of the General Defender Geometry. It's really one of the most impressive group of geometers. So maybe I just say who they are. So there was alphabetical, huh? uh, Raoul Bott, Kalabi, James Yilkes, Fritz Hisbrut, Cici Xiong himself, Klingenberg, Zhou Kong, Bert Koston, Masushima, Nighthouse, Nielenberg, Palais, Samuelson, Singer, Stephen Smale, Sternberg, and Jano. So this is a group of the editors for the first issue of the journal. And there's honorary um, advisors including Chern, which I just mentioned, Spencer, Hodge, and Liz Norris. So it basically has included all the major geometers at the time. And so no wonder the journal started out really outstandingly with the best paper, best people uh, at that time. So the first issue has the papers given by Marston Moss, S.S. Chern, uh, James Hughes, McKean and Singer, and several other really outstanding papers. That's the first issue of the journal. So you start out in a really outstanding manner. Once you start out with such a high level, many very good papers follow, naturally. So I remember when I was a graduate student, that was 48 years ago now, <laughs> in Berkeley. Uh, in Berkeley, the library was very small at that time, but they display all the journals. In, uh, in the library, um, I was still able to read all the journals. Uh, not nowadays, impossible. So I always take a look at the journal dependent geometry. And I looked at the second issue of journal dependent geometry. I found the, pa the paper by John Muno, Jack Muno, on the fundamental group and curvature. Uh, he writes so well that I was able to read it from beginning to the end. And I start to work on it despite I just started my uh, graduate school, actually. I was so fascinated by the paper. I read all the references related to it, and then I wrote a paper, which appeared in Annals after a few months. It was rather uh, fascinating because um, the paper was so well written the, I don't think there's any mistake, as far as I can tell. And um, so the journal has really uh, functioned very well, even for a beginning graduate student. And we always like to hope that the journal could function as well as it is. And, um, and I'm proud to say that uh, a few weeks ago, we start to collect all the papers that we consider to be important from the journal in the last 50 years. And we found there are so many important papers. So finally, we only condensed about 60 papers together. 
and we put it together into five volumes. And yes, up there, you can buy it with a good discount. <laughs> uh, it probably costs more money to produce it than the money you would buy. So, <laughs> uh, so it starts out from really outstanding papers uh, in the 60s, late 60s, and the 70s. As I mentioned, uh, I read the paper by Jack Milner, but there are many other very important papers that was uh, uh, produced including McKinnon and Singer, which is starting the local index freedom in many ways. So I think these are all important papers. Now, I have, well, I was a uh, benefiter from the, from the journal. I read the paper and I was very happy with it. Um, although I did publish one paper there, I, I think that paper is not good at all. But it was appear because I think the friendship was churned with Xiong. But uh, in any case, by the late six, 70s, um, I think <clears throat> the things are getting a um, little bit more clumsy. The bad log are getting bigger and bigger and all that. So there were some uh, problems that one had to deal with the journal. And Professor Xiong come uh, to see me while well, I was in uh, Tinsen at that time, uh, Institute for Advanced Study. I just become the faculty there. So he drove all the way from Lehigh to come to see me, and he insists that I should come to help the journal. And I was extremely reluctant, and then he got Chen, he got Kalabi, he got Nienberg, all to call me, and they said, you have to do it. And so finally, I thought there was no choice. I was extremely reluctant because I didn't know how to run the journal. I've never had any experience with it. But it turns out the staff support in the Institute for Advanced Study is excellent. Very good secretary, knows how to handle things uh, very nicely and all that. And of course, Professor Xiong was able to help. And, and when I told him that I may consider it, he also insists that we could uh, have some help. So at that point, we have uh, Lawson and Griffiths also come to help. But it was uh, largely run from Institute for Advanced Study because of the excellent uh, staff help. Well, I think we make, uh, by several good luck, we make a major turning, turning point in a matter of uh, one year to two years uh, because my Freeman solved the Poincaré conjecture, four dimensions at that time. And, uh, well, of course, we all know that was a very major uh, uh, contribution. Um, I know Freeman quite well because I visit San Diego often because my wife was there. And so during the process when he proved the Poincaré conjecture, I was uh, in his office once for a while or listening to his talks and all that. And because his approach was more largely based on Bing topology kind of uh, approach, Nobody in Princeton believed this approach can work. All people in Princeton who work on surgery freely believe that this cannot work. So I was talking with Mike, and I convinced him to publish in general dependent geometry. So, so he agreed, and at the end, when it was verified that it's actually true, um, our friends in Princeton was very upset that a paper like that should appear in general dependent geometry. And so anyway, I don't think there's any uh, bad feeling. I, I told my Freeman, I said, it's your choice. You make um, whatever uh, contribution you can do, and you feel differently, that's fine. But I said the major difference is that if you publish in general defender geometry, there will be a huge boost to the journal, and will make a big difference. And I think he considered that to be a good thing to do. So it appears in general dependent geometry. But right after that, we really have many, many major uh, papers appear. You can look it up in the, in the collect, uh, select uh, uh, papers that we collect. So there was a paper by Simon Donaldson, and there was a paper by many people, including Cliff Taus and many others. But I remember one important incident is the paper by Witten. 
supersymmetry and more speed. So I know Ed Witten reasonably well at that time. He come to the Institute for Advanced Study. He gave me this paper. He said, yeah, uh, this more in mathematics. Do you want to publish it? I said, fine. So we look at it. I send it to three different refugees. Well, by the way, yes, it has been tradition. We send to more than one refugee in the journal to make sure that everything goes right. All refugees want to reject the paper, saying that it's not to the standard of mathematics. And, <laughs> and I, I was um, taken back because I looked at the paper. I thought it's very clearly written. And there's some parts which he has not justified. Uh, it was spelled out very clearly, and why should they reject it? So I looked at the paper myself more carefully. I decided the part which cannot be, has not been filled, I can fill it in myself if I need to. So I decided to publish it. And I think that was a really important decision. Because right afterwards, it has tremendous influence in many different branches of mathematics, uh, including four, uh, paper which appeared a couple years later, uh, of course, including people work in, um, in physics and many, many other uh, subjects, including Dimali, who is here, and he wrote a pap paper on holomorphic Morse theory. So I mention it is because sometimes a chief editor does have to make some decisions which may be unusual, uh, which may be against the referee's uh, report. So many people thought that whatever Leffley says, we have to follow. Uh, it's not necessary. But we do, ho we do want to keep extremely high standard for, for the journal. So, well, I would say that in all these years, uh, we have kept very high standard uh, for the journal. And we are uh, still doing it. We branch out into many areas of mathematics including algebraic geometry, mathematical physics, analysis, and all kind of uh, interesting stuff that we uh, are excited about. So although the journal is called Journal of Defensive Geometry, in fact, we publish many papers which may not need to defend it. <laughs> so, so even though it's called defensive geometry, uh, it's actually better than that. At one point, I was trying to change the name to Journal of Geometry, and Nobody wants it, so it's kept to be general defensive geometry. Despite we are pretty general, uh, to be, uh, pretty general in mind. So uh, I should say that in all these years, we have an extremely strong support by Professor Xiong, and also the um, administration of Lehigh University. Uh, Lehigh University has been able to help the development of journal. I moved from San Diego to Harvard about 30 years ago, in 1987, so exactly 30 years ago. And the journal comes to here with the strong support by the Harvard Math Department. Harvard Math Department allowed us to have a secretary to deal with this, and I think it's a very good uh, thing to do because um, we published a very good quality papers, and we also, after uh, 1990, um, each three years, we run a major conference like this one in Harvard, and it's all funded by the journal. And so Lehigh University has been very generous on that, uh, because journal does make money, small money, because we are not exploiting the readers or some the libraries to, say, to make it more precise, not like the commercial publishers. Uh, but still, it makes some small money, and I talked really high. I said, the money we should try to give back to the mathematicians who contribute to the journal. So we have these activities, and I think it does come out very well. And each three years, we have a book about, actually each year we have a book about survey in dependent geometry as a result of those conferences, and I think this has been going very well. And I should say that the journal does not charge anything to the 
uh, authors, which I think is very important. Uh, why I mention it? I just found out because I want to put some of my papers, old papers together uh, as some kind of select work. My paper on Calabi conjecture was very well cited. And because of friendship, I published a paper in Communication in Pure and Applied Mathematics, the NYU Journal. It turns out, not NYU, but Wiley, who is the publisher behind it, wanted to charge me $5,000 to reprint the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt really bad about it. But you could be guaranteed that when you publish a paper in general defense geometry, we won't charge you a single penny. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, are, we have more competitors now than many journals come out to publish papers in geometry. But I believe that we are still the leader, and we still want to charge on to publish the best quality papers. So I don't want to talk too long now. Uh, let's have. Uh, Professor Xiong's uh, daughter, Nancy Xiong, to say a few words on behalf of her father, who has passed away 10 years ago. Oh. Can you hear me? Thank you. No, that'd be fine. Um, I want to thank the organizers for letting me give uh, brief remarks about the actual founder of the journal, my father, C.C. C. Shung. Um, he was born in 1916 in Jiangxi, China. He went to college at Zhejiang University and graduated in 1939. His love of and his lifelong love of differential geometry started there under um, his mentor, Professor Su Bu Ching. Now, he, his next plan after graduating in 1936 was to come to the United States to do graduate work. But that was during wartime, and he was not able to do that for quite a while. But what he did for about eight and a half years is he taught at the university, and he did research in China. And it wasn't an easy time. You just have to remember, this is during wartime. And the universities moved inland as the war front moved. So not only is he trying to do research, teaching at the university, but moving with the students inland from Hangzhou, which is on the east coast of China inland, to Tsongqing, which is more toward the center. But in 1945, the war ended, and my father got on one of the first military planes, got on a boat in Calcutta, and that was a slow boat to New York, then took buses to East Lansing, Michigan, where he had a full scholarship at Michigan State. My mom actually had um, a scholarship there, but she wasn't allowed on the plane. So she had to wait and actually got on one of the first ships that left Shanghai after the war and then met my father. He apparently finished his dissertation in about two years, did an inst instructorships at Wisconsin, Northwestern, and a fellowship at Harvard. And he um, arrived at Lehigh in 1952, where remained for, I think, probably like 60-some years. Um, and during that time, he published over um, 100 papers, wrote three books. But his major accomplishment to him would be the founding of the journal. And it's an interesting part. This is in the 60s, and it's, as Professor Yao has clearly stated, there was, there was nothing at that point that was specific for the journal. And I mean, I was young then, but I still remember my father talking to people, wanting to do this. And so there was this entrepreneurial streak that came out. And he assembled, as Pro Professor Yao explained, an amazing group of um, geometers who decided, who agreed to be on the advisory board. And then my father put together what is essentially now would be a, a business plan. And he actually pitched it to the provost at Lehigh who had a high regard for my father and said he gave him an initial startup. So the first couple of years obviously was difficult, not on the, um, the paper side, as you heard. I mean, the papers that were coming in were seminal, but it was the financial to make sure he kept under budget. And so my father did what good entrepreneurs do. Is he actually did everything himself. Um, he did editing. He did the accounting. He did budgeting. He paid the bills. He had a part-time secretary. But you have to remember, this is in the 60s. This is before computers, word processing, Excel spreadsheets. So 
he basically used a typewriter and carbon paper. But um, it, it was a labor of love, and it slowly started, I guess, stabilizing. And as you know, and, and actually Professor Yao has already explained how it came to be part with, with Harvard and been one of the first journals um, here. Just as a slight digression, my infinitesimal, infinitesimal contribution was my father, as you heard, was, was a perfectionist. He wanted everything about the journal to be perfect and initially. So he would put um, basically mock-ups of about eight different covers with different colors and different print. And my mom and I got to pick out the color, which is still, it may not be the exact one, but it's a wine-colored shade with that. So um, my father, just to sum it up, my father was a remarkable person. He came from humble beginnings, not, not poor, but humble. And he pursued a dream. He became a well-respected differential geometer. And along the way, he became an entrepreneur and at least initially founded the first um, journal of differential geometry. He's been a, he was a wonderful role model. And he would be absolutely honored and thrilled and proud to know that it, the journal is celebrating its 50th anniversary. Maybe we have Nina uh, Shipser, who's our dean, who used to be a geometer. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Yao. On behalf of the administration, I am truly delighted to be here today, and I'm honored to follow our wonderful first speakers in saying a few words. 50 years is a venerable achievement for the life of a scholarly journal. That's 50 years of scholars reading the JDG and being shaped by what they've read. It has been a tremendous gift to Harvard that the journal has had a home in our math department. And I'm very grateful to Lehigh University for its support. The history of the JDG demonstrates that academia is a global effort. It's proof that the best scholarly work is done through dialogue and collaboration across departments, institutions, countries, and continents. On behalf of the administration, I want to congratulate the JDG on the occasion of its 50th anniversary, and I want to thank Professor Yao for his tireless leadership, not just in editing the journal with Mr. Cao, but for always pushing the boundaries of mathematics and the shape of it as well. Couldn't resist that one. I also want to thank everyone here who has helped to make the JDG the outstanding publication that it is. So please enjoy the conference and help us celebrate the 50th anniversary. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Nina. So maybe we have our chairman, uh, Peter, uh, to say a few words. Thank you. So just on behalf of the Harvard Math Department, I'd like to welcome you all here. Um, it's just fantastic to look down the list of talks over the next few days and see so much of mathematics uh, represented under the big broad umbrella of um, differential geometry. When I was a PhD student, um, the papers I wanted to read were in JDG, and um, I still have those in my filing cabinet. I think the cardboard stapled on white and wine-colored um, covers are a little, a little torn. Um, it occurs to me it's actually Harvard's colors, too, more or less. I was just looking on my phone to compare Harvard Crimson to JDG wine, and I think they're actually the same. I think they're the same color. Um, when I completed my PhD, I was immensely proud that my thesis was accepted as two papers to be published in JDG. Um, and throughout my postdoc years and my career since the mathematician, I find myself constantly going back to important papers in that journal. Um, the conference which has um, spun off from the journal, which Yao has organized here um, many times now, is uh, a great benefit to the mathematical community, and it's wonderful to be able to host it here at Harvard and bring so many 
of you here um, time after time with this splendid event. Um, so I'd like to thank Yao for his work over the years in maintaining this as a fantastic conference. Um, the journal, as it's hosted here, is supported uh, by Maureen, whom many of you know. I'd like to thank her for her work for the journal over many years now and for also her work uh, on this conference. Um, and um, I'm very much looking forward to some days of mathematics and welcome you here again. Thank you. Okay, there, one of the most important things is the support by Lehigh University. Uh, Professor Kao is going to represent the poets of Lehigh to say a few words. Okay, uh, it is my pleasure to represent Lehigh uh, at this very special occasion. Um, so our provost uh, couldn't come. He wished to thank Professor Yao for the invitation, and he asked me to uh, extend his congratulations to the 50 years uh, of success, and he said, wish uh, many more. Um, so... Uh, on, the, on behalf of Lehigh, I would also like to uh, say a few more words. Um, so thanks to the professor, late Professor C.C. Shun's uh, great vision and uh, uh, for his legacy in the past, uh, uh, for the journal for the past 50 years. Lehigh has uh, been associated to the journal, has benefited also greatly. Uh, for example, from the income of the JDG, uh, the, every year we have one postdoc called C.C. Shun, Visiting Assist Assistant Professor, uh, uh, is funded by uh, this uh, money. And that uh, Lehigh established uh, C.C. Shun Fund uh, in 1990. Um, so, uh, and of course, um, above all, uh, Lehigh has become a household name uh, in the geometry community, and uh, that is uh, very precious. Uh, so uh, let me say that um, uh, we are really grateful, most grateful to Professor Yao uh, for his uh, great leadership and his uh, dedication and tremendous effort in making, uh, keeping the journal one of the most respected uh, journalists in mathematics. Well, uh, uh, when uh, in early 80s, uh, I was a graduate student, started from Princeton and then moved to San Diego with Professor Yao. So as a student, I already witnessed how much uh, Professor Yao put his uh, heart and time in journal. Uh, and of course, uh, since becoming the uh, managing editor, I know even more so uh, that Professor Yao's uh, effort. So for that, uh, Li Hai is uh, uh, most graceful. Um, the, also, we like to thank uh, the, the editors of journal, uh, the current and the past, for their great contributions. Uh, that um, is uh, very important. Um, and to the Harvard Math Department for all these years, tremendous support and continued support. And to Maureen, especially Maureen, that she put so much, uh, so put her heart and work on the journal. Yeah. Uh, finally, of course, uh, uh, we are very grateful to all the authors who contributed their best excellent works to the journal. And for that, uh, start with Professor Shun, I wanted also to return some of the benefit to the community. And uh, in 1986, he initiated the Lehigh JDG Conference on Geometry and Topology with the assistance from uh, Don Davis and Professor David Johnson. So we had the first uh, geometry conference in 86 at Lehigh. And since 1990, uh, Professor Yao uh, started here at the Harvard 
the, uh, the, the conference on geometry topology. So every three year, the conference happened to Harvard, the other two years at Lehigh, and of course Lehigh is, uh, is uh, uh, most delighted to associate with the name of Harvard, so enjoying running these conferences. So let me end in, uh, by saying that since 2003, we also received the support from NSF to partially uh, supporting the participation of our grad students, postdocs, and members of underrepresented groups. So thank you all. Yeah.